Hare Krishna. We continue reading from Bhagavad Gita as it is. Karma Yoga, Action in Krishna Consciousness, Chapter 5, Text 13. Sarva Karmani Manasa Sanyasya Ste Sukham Vashi Navadware Pure Dehi Neva Kurva Nakarayan. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Samishla Prabhupada. When the embodied living being controls his nature and mentally renounces all actions, he resides happily in the city of nine gates, the material body, neither working, I'm sorry, nor causing work to be done. The embodied soul lives in the city of nine gates. So embodied soul, we are called embodied soul. Why? Because right now we are living inside this body. That's why we are called embodied embodied soul in the city of nine gates. This material body is compared to a city which has nine gates. The activities of the body or the figurative city of body are conducted automatically by its particular modes of nature. The activities of the body or the figurative city of body are conducted automatically by its particular modes of nature. How can we understand this? The, the body that we are in right now, it, it's under the more control of modes of nature. For example, we are the soul. Hmm? So when we are in the body of a human being, we act as we are a human being. We will sit down on a chair and then eat food. We'll break the food or eat with fork and spoon, you know, like that. But same, same living entity, same soul, same living entity, when it's in the body of a dog, it's not going to sit down on a chair and table and, you know, cook the food and take a fork and spoon and eat. No, just anywhere, anyhow, whatever food comes, just eat it. Why is that? The living entity is the same, but it's because the body is different and the, each body is under different modes under the control of the different modes. Same living entity then is in a dog's body is walking on four legs, but in human body is walking on two legs. Why not the dog is walking only on the hind legs and using his two front ones as his hands? Or why we, the human beings, are not walking on all four? The, each body is under the control of the modes of nature. So the soul, although subject himself, subjecting himself to the conditions of the body, can be beyond those conditions if he so desires. So what happens? The body is under the control of the modes of nature. And because we think we are the body, we get subjected. But, but if we want, if we desire, we can, although being inside the body, can be um, can go beyond the modes, can transcend the modes. Owing only to forgetfulness of his superior nature, he identifies with the material body and therefore suffers. So this is our ignorance, our ignorance. We have forgotten who we truly are. We have forgotten our true nature, who, who are, we truly are. And we are thinking, I am the body, that we are in right now. And because of that, we are suffering. By Krishna consciousness, he can revive his real position and thus come out of his embodiment. So there are many processes that we can do. And one of the processes is Krishna consciousness. There, there are different processes in one, which one can attain to this, his uh, position of the soul. So, but by Krishna consciousness, he can come to his real position, his eternal position. No need to come, remain, uh, no need to take another material body anymore. Therefore, when one takes to Krishna consciousness, he at once becomes completely aloof from bodily activities. So what we have to do, we just have to come to the platform of Krishna consciousness. And at once we have transcended the body. At once, we are on the liberated platform. So that is what is uh, recommended. 
come on the platform of Krishna consciousness, then even though we are inside the body, we are liberated. We are not attached to the body. In such a controlled life in which his deliberations are changed, he lives happily within the city of nine gates. And so once the, once the consciousness is already Krishna conscious, he has nothing to do with the body. He understands his true position. He, he is not identifying himself with the body at all. He is realizing his, his true self. He's realizing who he truly is. So Krishna, by, by Krishna consciousness, one can, one can revive. We can understand who we truly are by uh, Krishna consciousness. So each and every soul is actually originally Krishna conscious, each and every one of us. So it's not an artificial imposition, you know. It is not a something artificial that we have to do. We just have to, uh, what do you say, discover who we are. That's all. And how do we do that? Take up the process of Krishna consciousness, which begins by hearing and chanting. Hearing about Krishna from Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. And very soon, very soon we can be able to revive our original position. Revive is real position. This is what the words are so important. Not that we become someone else. No, we just revive who we truly are. So the city of nine gates are called uh, Navadware Pure Dehi Hamso Leela Yate Bahi Vashi Sarvasya Lokasya Stava Rasya Charasya Cha. <clears throat> Sorry. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is living within the body of a living entity, is the controller of all living entities all over the universe. So the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is living within the body of a living entity, is the controller of all living entities all over the universe. The Supreme Lord, he is the Paramatma. The Paramatma is sitting inside the inside our body. He is in our heart. He's sitting right next to us. There is the soul and there is the super soul. There is the Atma and there is the Paramatma. Hmm? So we are the Atma and the Paramatma. Both are inside this material body that we are in right now. The body consists of nine gates, two eyes, two nostrils, two ears, one mouth, the anus, and genitals. So our nine gates, these are the nine gates, eyes, two eyes, two nostrils, two ears, one mouth, the anus, and genitals. The living entity in his condition stage identifies himself with the body. Right now we are thinking I'm the body. Our consciousness is that I'm the body. Everything, is, you know, we are thinking that way. We, our, every thought, word, and action is that. Our consciousness is body conscious. Right now, our consciousness is what is uh, just on the body, uh, material level. But when he identifies himself with the Lord within himself, he becomes just as free as the Lord, even while in the body, Satesh. Shweta Shvatara Upanishad 3.18. Therefore, a Krishna conscious person is free from both the outer and inner activities of the material body. So, but when he transfers his consciousness from the body to the Supreme Lord, that's what we have to do. We are now, our, we are just conscious of our body. That's all. But we just have to transfer this consciousness with the Supreme Lord, who is within us. The Supreme Lord is within us. Then, even though we are still inside the body, we are not affected by any of the works of the body, any of the activities of the body. Why? Because the consciousness is not anymore with the body. The consciousness is already with the Supreme Lord. So, therefore, a Krishna conscious person is free from both the outer and inner activities of the material body. That's what we have to do. We are now conscious only of the, of the body. We have to transfer this consciousness to Krishna conscious, the original position. We have to revive our Krishna consciousness, revive our original position. 
Is that okay? So we'll stop here for today. Thank you so much for listening and joining in. Bhagavad Gita ki jai, Shla Prabhupada ki jai, Kaur Bhakta Vindaki jai, Hare